welcome to this little tutorial video. This is called a canjo. I did not invent this instrument. I, I found it on the internet, actually. Uh, but it's a nice, cheap, easy build. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how this is made. It's a stick with a can screwed to the end of it, and you can see the screws right there. It has a guitar string that goes down inside the can. That string runs up and over a screw here to a guitar tuner. And that's the whole dang thing. That's the canjo. That's all there is to it. You don't need much to build one of these. You're going to need a handsaw. This is a Japanese style handsaw called a Ryoba, but you can use another kind if you've got a different kind. A hammer, a drill, a flathead screwdriver, a double aught, very small Phillips head screwdriver, an awl, three drill bits, quarter inch, eighth inch, and sixteenth inch, a can. I like these 29 ounce tomato sauce cans, but certainly you could use another type of can or size of can if you wanted. Three screws that are at least a half an inch long. And at least one of them has to be a flathead screw. That means that it has a single groove running from side to side, not a little cross or a square or anything else. You'll need a guitar tuner, and that will come with a very little tiny screw to hold it in. You'll need a guitar string. This is a 0.18 plain steel acoustic guitar string. Wound style strings tend not to work so well for this project. And then of course a stick. I've got an old shovel handle, but pretty much anything will do as long as it's at least an inch and an eighth in diameter. You can go to the hardware store if you want and ask for some closet rod, but something like a broom handle is going to be too skinny. Once you have all of your tools and materials assembled, We'll get started. In the links below, you'll find a link to this how-to page and this page that has links and information about hardware and materials. For example, buying the strings and the guitar tuner. Of course, you can do that online, but you can also always go and support your local music shop who would love to sell you a guitar tuner and they would love to sell you guitar strings. Tuner, almost every guitar shop that I know that does repairs has a coffee can full of tuners that are mismatched that are sitting in the back and they'll probably sell you one for not a lot of money. I build these instruments with a lot of young people and so I'm going to talk and present as if I'm speaking to a young person. If I'm speaking to a not young person, well, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be condescending, this can be a great project to do with young people. It can, it's pretty easy. They can do a lot of the work themselves. And at the end of it, they're going to have something that they built with their own hands. And that's worth a million bucks. If you are a young person, there are a couple of steps that you might need a grown up around to help you with, or maybe an older sibling if they're not being a jerk today. Uh, so I'm going to mark and cut this stick at 30 inches. And I'm going to use a handsaw. Now, if you are a grown-up and you have a chop saw or a bandsaw, or if you're a young person that has access to a grown-up with a chop saw or a bandsaw, then you certainly can use that. But if you've just got a handsaw laying around your house, it's pretty easy to just cut the stick right off at 30 inches. There we go. 30-inch dowel. Okay. On the sheet, you'll see that the next step is to rip the tuner notch for the tuner to go through the stick and for the string to bend and come down to the tuner. I'm going to take my guitar tuner and you'll see that the guitar tuner has a little hole right here and a little waist right there. So we want to position that on our stick and make a line. See how that hole is going to stick up above that line. 
See that? Now I'm going to just project that line back on both sides, and I'm going to project it back about the length of the screw plate of my tuner. So, so now you can see I have my line. I've projected that line back, and then I've drawn a line across the top. All right? So now what I'm going to do, and this is a little trickier, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right down that line. Okay, I've, so I've cut down that line. See that? And now I'm going to cross cut across here. And that's going to make my little shelf. There we go. That's the hardest part of this whole operation. See the little... Now this is where we need our quarter inch drill bit, which is the biggest of our drill bits. And I'm going to drill this hole kind of right in the middle of that shelf. Just like that. See where that hole is? It's kind of right in the middle, isn't it? Now then I can take my tuner and because it's a quarter inch hole, see now I can put my tuner through that hole. But I don't want to put it with the plate on the shelf like that. I want to put it with the plate on the round part, like that. See on the one that I already made? See how that's on, that plate is on the round part and it sticks through to that little shelf. Now the important thing to remember about tuners is that you want the post, which is this part here. So we have the post, we have the plate. You want the post to be facing to be on the side of the tuner toward where the can is going to be. Can you see the difference? So here the post, which is that little uh, brass screw, is on the side closest to where the can is going to be, not like this. Now the thumb screw is on the side closest to where the can is going to be. That's going to really matter. So you... Now I'm going to switch out my one quarter inch drill bit for my 16th inch drill bit, which is the very, very smallest one. And the reason is I have to put this little tiny screw in to hold that tuner in place. Now this particular tuner has two holes for that screw. You only need the one. But for this project, it's okay. I'm just going to drill that little hole right out. And this is where we use our piece of paraffin wax or soap. This is just paraffin wax, like golf wax. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screw and I'm going to kind of scrape it on the wax. And you see how it picked up a little bit of wax there? That's going to really help this little tiny screw go into this hole. It's really, really hard to get them to go in if you don't do that. Now, I'm going to put this screw right here so that it can go down into that hole. And this is where I'm going to use my single aught Phillips head screwdriver to get that screw into that hole. There we go. There we go. You see that? There's just one screw holding it in and the, the tuner's coming out so that it's coming up over the shelf. All right, look at that. We're more than halfway there. All right. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these screws. Now, these are screws that I take out of old pianos that I take apart. Um, but you can use any screw as long as it's least, at least a half an inch long. And it has to be, as I said before, a flathead screw. That is, it just has one stripe going across, not a cross in it or a square. It has to be a flathead screw. This is really important. They can be hard to find, but if you go to your hardware store and ask, they will probably be able to help you out. So now I'm going to use my third drill bit. This is my eighth inch drill bit, and I'm going to put that into my drill. And I'm going to drill a hole that is about three-eighths of an inch back from the edge of that shelf. See where that is? See that hole? So it's right in line with your tuner and about three-eighths of an inch back. Again, I'm going to take my my screw and just kind of get some wax on it. See how I got some wax on it. 
I'm going to put it in there. And now I'm going to use my, my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to screw this in. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your the line in the screw head is in line with the stick. It doesn't want to be off at an angle. It wants to be in line with the stick. That's really important. And you see, I didn't put it all the way in. I put it most of the way in, but not all the way. All right. Now it's time to attach our can. You can leave the wrapper on or you can take the wrapper off. I like to take the wrapper off just because I think it looks better and because I'm not really advertising for anyone who makes tomato sauce. And when you take the wrapper off, you will notice a truth that very few Americans know, which is that every can manufacturer in the, in the country secretly hopes that their can is going to be made into a canjo one day. And how do we know? because they give us a reference line. That reference line is just for Kanjo makers. And here's what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna take our can and we're gonna put it on our stick. And I'm going to line up with, the, with my tuner all the way down. I'm gonna line the line on the can up with the tuner. Okay, lay this down on something, and this is where having a helper can be really good. I'm gonna put the can all the way down, and then I'm gonna pull it back just a little. I don't want the can, and you'll see this on the sheet, I don't want the can, the bottom of the can, touching the stick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it back a little. Now I'm gonna take this tool, it's called an awl, A-W-L, you can also just use a big nail. I'm gonna put it right on that line and I'm gonna give it a thwap like that. Good solid hit. And what that did, you can see, is it punched a little hole in my can, see that? And then I'm taking my eighth inch drill and drilling through the can into the stick. I'm gonna take one of my other screws. And you want that to be really nice and tight. You want that to really be on there, Ugh, like that, okay? Now, as I was doing that, you see how my can got a little wonky, got a little twisted off? I'm gonna bring it back so that it's nice and in line. And if you look down the length of the can, right, of the stick, the shelf has the tuner on back, if I drew a straight line down the back, the can would be attached right directly below where that tuner is. See that? Great. Okay. Now I've got it all in line. Now I can do, I can put my other screw in down here. Okay, so now I've got my two screws in there. The last step is to get the string on. Now, I, I like to put a block of wood or something that, uh, that I don't care that much about underneath my can when I do this. Because what we're gonna do is take this awl, or if you have a big you know, 20 penny nail, that'll work too. And I'm gonna put it so that it's about 5 sixteenths, a quarter of an inch away from the stick. It wants to be right in line with that tuner. And then I'm gonna take my hammer and give it a thwack, but you don't want too big of a hole. Just a little hole, see that? See how I just punched a little hole right there? And let's see if we can see how close it is to the stick. So it's right in line with the tuner, right on the stick. Now I'm gonna take my string. Now this is called a ball end guitar string. See on one end it's open and on the other end there's this little metal piece called the ball. It's not really a ball but we call it a ball end string. 
hole. I'm going to take the part that's not the ball end and put it through the hole. And you see how when it gets to the ball end, that ball catches. See that? Then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to bring that string and put it right into that the slot in that screw. See how that does? That's why you need a slotted head screw, so you can do that. And now, if you've never strung a guitar before, this is a little bit tricky, and actually the person at your local guitar shop might have to help you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it down with my thumb. See that, I went through the screw. Hold it down with my thumb, and then I'm gonna take and put this end through the hole in the guitar tuner and pull it tight. See that? It's a little tricky, and if you're not used to doing it, it can be, it, it can take you a minute to get used to. And then I'm gonna hold it down while I turn the thumb screw. If, if you don't get that the first time, don't get frustrated, okay? It'll take, it might take you a couple of tries, but you'll get there eventually, I promise. Now, as I'm twisting, listen to what happens. And there you go. There's your canjo. Now, you can play it with a pick. You've got a built-in whammy pedal. which I'm just doing by squeezing the can. And if you move your fingers along it, right, you can actually make notes. I actually like to play mine with my pocket knife, uh, or you could use a table knife or a fork or something like that, because then you get a really cool slide Congratulations, you've built your very own Kanjo. Who says you have to go to the guitar store and buy a really fancy guitar? You just made your own instrument. That's pretty amazing. You can find my stuff at Salt City Found Object Instrument Works, and you can access that at scfoiw.blogspot.com. That information is on this sheet, which is linked below. If you do use this video to make yourself a canjo, I'd sure love to see it, and I'd love to see you playing it. Drop me a line at it. You can take something that you thought was trash, that had no value at all, and you can make a wonderful musical instrument out of it. Trash is in the eye of the beholder. Maybe we can all work to behold things a little differently. I can't wait to see what you do.